I'm so tired of the real life costs of their casual cruelty and indifference to the suffering of the men and women that fight for this country. And if we can't take care of the people who take care of us, then we're nothing. We are nothing. Wow. That was John Stewart. He's a longtime advocate for veterans and the first responders at Ground Zero. That was him on Fox News today, calling out shameless Republicans for, in his view, outdoing their own petty politics, this time at the expense of life-saving relief for U.S. veterans. 41 Republicans on Wednesday tanked a bipartisan bill that would expand health care benefits to millions of post-9-11 veterans who have been exposed to deadly toxins in overseas burn pits. Right here, you're seeing Republican Senators Ted Cruz and Steve Daines celebrating by fist bumping while Daines' no vote was being read on the Senate floor. There are no votes shocked veterans, many of whom are sick, and desperately waiting for the benefits that this bill would bring. They're now blaming these senators for playing political games and then celebrating with their lives. Here's why. These 25 senators already helped pass a similar version of the bill just last month by a vote of 84 to 14. And after some minor changes in the House, they reversed their position and are now blocking it. Joining us now, Paul Rykoff, host of the Independent Americans podcast and founder of the group Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America. Hi there, friend. I have missed you. And I know you've been talking about this issue on the show for as long as I've known you. First, tell me what's in the bill and then tell me what's going on. Good to be back with you, Nicole. Uh, in the bill is the most comprehensive veterans legislation we've seen since the new GI Bill passed in 2008. This is transformative. This will provide uh, screening, support, and care for one in five veterans in America. It's veterans who were exposed to toxins in Iraq and Afghanistan and around the world post 9-11. And it goes all the way back to Vietnam era generation veterans who were exposed uh, to Asian Orange. So this is really transformative. We've been fighting for it for almost 20 years. It's taken way too long. We got to the five yard line and now a hand grenade is being rolled into it um, by a group of Republicans. But I think it's important to, to, to focus on one thing. It's being led by one ringleader. It's Senator Pat Toomey, Republican from Pennsylvania, who's been messing with this thing from the start and is orchestrating this whole. So I think we've got to make sure we focus on him because it's a play the Republicans have called before. They did the same thing on the Zadroga bill for 9-11. They did it on the extension of the Zadroga bill. Last time it was Rand Paul and Mike Lee. They did it on the Clay Hunt suicide bill back in 2014, and that was Tom Coburn, who they used to call Dr. No. So this is a power move. It's not just about petty politics. It's about power. And it's about Senator Toomey, who never served in uniform, screwing my friends who are dying and sick right now. So I heard in, in interviews that, that you and John Stewart have done what, what this is about. I, I just I don't want to repeat the falsehoods about the bill, but I, I do want to give you a chance to set the record straight about um, what, what the phony attacks are on the right. It's, it's about some of how the money is spent. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I'll tell you, it's crap. And I'm not going to repeat lies or misinformation or carry water for Senator Pat Toomey. I think underscoring his cowardice is that he won't come on your show. He wouldn't go on Morning Joe. He doesn't seem to be doing any interviews. He's not available publicly. He's issued one statement and he's hiding. And this is the tactic. It's been done over and over again. It's what Coburn did years ago when he was Dr. No, and he put anonymous holds on bills, and he blocked bills. Toomey is retiring this fall. There are no consequences for him. His seat is going to be given to someone else. And that's why they're picking him. That's why he's the guy to do this, because there are really no political consequences he can face. And I've said this in other interviews. I think the, the consequences have to come from the public. You have to make Senator Pat Toomey's name mud. You have to shame him into oblivion. So when he leaves the Senate and wants to roll into some cushy corporate job while more of my friends are dying, corporations say no. Lobbyists say no. Lobbying companies say no. Pat Toomey needs to be the guy who pays the price for this because he's the one leading it. And he won't even make the case to the public, which I think underscores his cowardice. He's a coward in a suit, in air conditioning, while right now, Veterans who are dying, some of them with oxygen tanks, are doing a sit-in outside the Capitol. They've been there since the other night. They're going to be there until this passes, and he won't even go out and see them. So I think you've really got to name the cowardice. You've got to call him out, and you've got to make him pay a political price for this shenanigans. 
Can we talk about the substance of the bill and, and, and who it would help? You talked about your friends. You talked about the oxygen tanks. Talk about the, the burn pits and, and, and how and why they're so sick. So anybody who tracked on the 9-11 first responder story can kind of understand this. And, and that was part of the momentum here. After we got the 9-11 first responders bill done, after thousands of people breathed in all that crap at Ground Zero, including myself, I was down there as a first responder. After we got that through, as soon as we got it through, we said, OK, firefighters, John Stewart, we need your help now to make this case to America about veterans. And when I was in Iraq, when I was in Kuwait, when many of us have been deployed, they didn't have garbage dumpsters where the garbage truck would come through and take everything away. They dig big holes in the ground and they put medical waste and, and military equipment and plastic and they'd set it on fire and they'd burn it all off like they used to do with, with waste in, in Vietnam in a barrel, except sometimes acres long. And we'd all be downwind from that. We'd breathe it in, we'd get sick. And now many of my friends have already died. Others are sick. And, and I said this on a show last night, Nicole, I don't know how long I'm going to live. But I'm probably going to die from something I ingested at one of these places, either at Ground Zero or in Iraq, because every time I cough, my wife looks at me and goes, uh, is, that, is this the time to get screened? And my friends are screened. And another important point here, the reason we got so much momentum is because Joe Biden publicly declared that he believes Bo Biden's cancer. And his death was caused by burn pits. So that was critical to get mm -hmm. us to this point. And I hope telling these stories will be critical in helping us get it through Monday. Schumer says he's going to bring it back up on Monday. We need it to go through. And then we got plenty of other stuff to work on. What does the hand-to-hand -hand sort of campaign look like to get this bill done on Monday? It's shame. <laughs> it's like total shame. Uh, Schumer says he's going to reintroduce it. Uh, I think Schumer's going to have to do some backdoor dealing uh, with the Republicans to see if maybe he can get them across the line. But if I were Schumer, I'd bring the same bill forward every day and make the Republicans vote no, because there's a political component to this. In every crisis, there's an opportunity. And I'm an independent, but if the Democrats are smart, they will weaponize the hell out of this in the midterms. You've already seen one candidate, Evan McMullen, who's running as an independent in Utah and is gaining ground. He's weaponizing this against Trump apologist and election denier Mike Lee. Now, if I were at the DCCC, instead of supporting right-wing primary uh, candidates from the GOP, I'd be focusing on this. I'd give it to every Senate candidate who's running this fall and make these 41 people pay a price, because it does move independence, and it will get through. It might take us... This week, but then they're going to go on vacation, by the way. They'll go on a big, long August re recess, and more of our friends will die, and they'll have to pick it up in the fall or maybe even in the lame duck. So while that happens, I'm going to, again, mention this. There's blood on Pat Toomey's hands. Every day this takes longer, more people get sick, and more people die. There is a human price to this. John's been putting a great focus on it, but people need to understand. Look online. See the stories I'm sharing. These are real people who are suffering right now. And now they're experiencing the insult of feeling like their country doesn't care about them and the mental health anguish of not knowing when health is going to come. We wonder why we have a recruiting problem in this country right now. It's not because the military is too woke or any of the other crap you hear from Tucker Carlson. It's because of stuff like this. This is what hurts our recruiting, and our enemies are celebrating. It damages our national security, and it's much bigger than just one veterans bill. What is it that Republicans hide behind to vote against our veterans? It seems like such a hypocritical posture for them to make. They hide often behind anonymity. Like, I don't think most people know who Pat Toomey is. He's kind of a backbencher. He's not in the media much. Uh, and, and he's the perfect guy to put up here since he's leaving. And either Fetterman or Oz will take his spot in the fall. Uh, a lot of them hope you don't notice. You know, they think you're on vacation right now and you're not paying attention. And, and the, you know, you'll think the Democrats are just making something out of nothing here. But every major veterans group in America, the American Legion, IAVA, the DAV, all of them that are bipartisan, and many of them even lead right, lean right, have been out in front on this, have been supporting this. And I believe six Republicans also supported this. So I think we got to make them famous, make every one of them famous. And Ted Cruz is a great example. Ted Cruz, I mean, his brand equals cowardice at this point. But time and time again, <laughs> he shows us that he doesn't give a damn about anybody. And I, I just, I'm yeah. baffled that Texas can't find somebody better than Ted Cruz for their Senate. That, that's what they got to work on, in my opinion.